is to the 2024 general elections, then we like to do these conversations once in a while. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to be joined by uh, Mr. Captain Kofi Mwabin. He is, uh, these days it's difficult to uh, introduce him. I know he runs um, a foundation, um, the Kofi Mwabin Leadership Institute, where he mentors young, budding entrepreneurs. Uh, he also plays golf, uh, you know, once in a while. But of course, you know, he's the uh, founder and uh, first chief executive officer of UT Bank. Thank you, sir, for your time and good to have you on Business Focus. It's my pleasure. It's always a pleasure having you on, on, on my show. Um, how's it going to be treating you? <laughs> what a way to start. Well, I think everyone is having a problem. Uh, it's a matter of just positioning yourself, uh, adjusting your lifestyle, and living within your means and uh, going along with the flow. Mm. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And uh, incidentally, I'm in my pension age. So, uh, and I'm not doing much because there's, uh, I also go to court and there's a bit of a stigma about my name and the uh, collapse of the bank and things like that. So I take it easy. Yeah. Let's talk, talk a bit about your, uh, you launched the volume two of that book. Um, how's it going? We did a volume one, which was a UT story, volume one, Humble Beginnings, which was about my life, leaving the army and getting into business and eventually uh, founding UT, Unique Trust Financial Services, and all the problems with the new uh, company. And that is to help new entrepreneurs and leaders to learn from our mistakes and what we did right. But the second book is also about building a winning team, how to expand, and the spirit and the culture that we had to create all those institutions. There's the third book, which uh, uh, we hope to launch in November when we inaugurate uh, the second cohort of the PKM Office College. And I'm going to deal with UT Bank, the rise and fall of UT Bank, more or less. You've got some bombshells in the volume three? Uh, it depends on what you call bombshells. You know, I look at the UT story and it's like trying to explain how the Titanic sunk. sunk. A whole lot of factors came together for the, the big Titanic to sink. Do you, do you find it a grand conspiracy to... No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I think um, it was... Uh, it's sad. If you take me out, the UT, I find that it's really sad because we, it's a story of an indigenous company started from the basic, because we're just about four of us at Cantamanto with one table and no curtains and all that, and we grew it transparently. Everybody saw UT year on, year out, with our financials being published up to the point where we even became a bank, and we went outside Nigeria, South Africa, Germany at some point. And I'm not even talking about the acknowledgments in Ghana were invited to go and talk in Stanford, in Oxford, uh, Icon uh, of uh, Charter Institute of Management Accountants, Johnny Walker, uh, Giant. How many times do we create such local giants or brands that when we create one, we kill it without thinking about the course, without investigation, without consulting the team, the directors or management or shareholders, and we just kill it? You've not been very charitable uh, towards the Nana Kufado government. Uh, at least in the last interviews I've had with you, you haven't stopped at criticizing the government um, of its management of the economy. Um, thankfully, uh, we've seen an end to the domestic debt exchange program. Uh, the macroeconomic indicators are beginning to show some good signs. Inflation is coming down from about 58% in 2022. Interest rates seem to be coming down. You must give them some credit at this time. Give who? The government. <laughs> well, I think you live in a different part of Ghana. Really. No, but it is a fact. I mean, ask, that any, interest rates. ask anyone on the streets, cut out all these uh, economic jargons. You call them I mean, jargons? Listen, yes. Listen, when I retired, my pension was worth about $6,500. And now it's worth maybe $1,300. Do you have to throw all those figures at me? Pensioner, my pay, uh, when was it, 12 years ago, 
was over $6,000. It's now $1,200 by exchange rate. You don't find anything good about this government? You don't think they've achieved some good things? I certainly must have achieved some good things. But I'm thinking of Ghana generally. And take the financial sector. Their figure is that they used $25 billion to sanitize, for the lack of a better word, the financial sector. And then, and that was about $6 billion at the time, dollars. Soon after that, a year or two after that, you rush to IMF to borrow three billion under critical terms, and they hold you by the balls for three billion, and you threw away six billion just two years prior to that. What kind of judgment is it? It doesn't make sense to me. If you look at even UT alone, and I don't want to talk about it, but the government uses 2.2 billion to collapse UT, and the UT was only about 800 million. Assuming they took the whole 2.2 billion and said, take it as a loan and pay over some time, would it have made a better sense? Instead, you criminalize everybody and no investigation. Personally, I was 20 months out of office when they collapsed it. So why am I in court? It doesn't make sense. It, 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 it's marks of victimization, jealousy, envy, and all those things. But I don't have time for that. The Vice President is championing the digitalization agenda. That Alone will not solve the problem. And in actual fact, even that, it's a bit messy. As we speak, if you jump a red light, where are we going to find your car? car? Even now, the police will find it difficult find, uh, uh, getting, getting you if you jump a red light. So it's all too much noise about little that is done. And it's, it's not difficult. Listen, leadership is not difficult, but in Africa, we have too many things that pull us away, away from doing what is right. I think Ghanaians and Africans, because of colonization and slavery and things, we are a bit, we feel inferior within ourselves. So instead of concentrating on doing the right things to benefit everybody, we are thinking about ourselves. And when they get a bit of money, they must show off that they have these houses, they have so much money. And, have, and I, I tell people that, listen, when you come into this world, you are supposed to acquire worldly things, but it's only for you to use those worldly things to impact this world and make it a better place. Were you impacted by the domestic debt exchange program? Yeah, I was, because I sold my house, which also generated a lot of hula baloo about something. And I bought this, uh, my apartment, which is ideal for me. And then I put some monies in and the uh, normal treasury bills and things. And then there's DDEP. So again, the planned pension has suffered. Well, treasury bills were not affected, unless yeah. you put government bonds. Yeah, I know. But then what I'm trying to say is that even for pensioners who had planned well, like me, I had planned well, I sold my house and put my money to other places. And what is really happening is that the government is shifting its responsibility and putting it ahead of whoever comes to, to run this country. So whether NDC comes or whoever comes to power, it's not going to be easy to turn the tide. But, but we had become highly indebted. Our debts were becoming unsustainable. But who we needed to go to the IMF. We needed political credibility. I've just told and we you. We needed to restructure our debts. I've just told you, don't throw away six billion anyhow and go running for three billion. I just told you. Because they used 25 billion to sanitize the banking, uh, uh, the financial system. That was six billion. And after that, you run to uh, IMF to, to chase for three billion. As a former banker, uh, you, you run a banking institution. When you heard of it for the very first time, Ghana had to undergo a domestic debt exchange program. Did you get scared about the possible impact on the banking industry? I was scared, but interestingly enough, nothing much changes the status quo of Ghanaians. You see. In the developed world, this will have created a lot of hell by in Ghana, uh, Nyamebe. When UT Bank was collapsed, for example, UT Bank was a listed company, which meant about 15,000 people had shares which were being traded on the stock exchange. The government did not take into account these investors and how the shares were performing. They just collapsed the bank. They didn't address these 15,000 shareholders their issues or their money, it doesn't matter how small it was. 
Now, that should have had a big, huge impact on Ghana Stock Exchange. Because it means having money or investing in stock exchange, overnight, the government can just override it. Again, Ghanaians didn't do anything about it. A whole lot of things that go on in this country, people in positions and things who are misbehaving, nobody calls them to order. Nothing. And Ghanaians take it. And you call that being docile? Is we're, that because you try to compare what's because happened, we're not brought what's happened in Kenya well, we're not. only because the government wants to, wanted to impose certain taxes and we saw the people's reaction to that, which subsequently led to the firing of the entire cabinet. People lost their jobs. The government had to call back you know, its earlier decision. Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, on that score, Kenyans have shown the way. But you see, it comes at a cost. So it's better not to get there. I mean, the damage of state property and things like that is quite huge. So, so you see nothing really working with the Ghanaian economy. Um, you think that the government could have done a lot more better let me, than... Let me make it. Mm. The fact that the economy is... We are all there. We can wake up in the morning, go out and come home and go to the shop or market and buy something. It is working somehow. As, as the uh, account people say, it's a comfortable and so on and so forth. But it could be a lot better. I mean, I don't want to say, but the resources that we have, even the human capital that we have, and all that, it, we could have done a lot better. So to sit here and say, oh, it's not bad. No, I won't say that. Because what, see, even it is said that the biggest enemy to uh, great is good. So once you accept this, it means you don't want any change. But this is not acceptable. We need to have things better. There's too much poverty, and we can overcome this. And there's too much wastage in, in the top places, and too much appointments that are not right. People are appointed, they have no clue when they put them there because they are podcasted, or they have the right connection, and they come and mess up whole institutions. The benefits do well, is you were one of those who were strongly against the former finance minister, the president eventually listened to you, he's out of office. Okay. You, you no longer concern yourself with what the government chooses to do? What can I do? One person. I can't do anything. And I'm even in court, being tried for, uh, what is it? Uh, as, as a criminal. It's a state versus Prince Kofi Amwabi. Do you fear you may sometime be jailed? I would doubt that I can be jailed because there's no basis for them to put me in jail. But they could probably use some technicalities if they hate me that much and they will influence the judicial system. That's the only way they can jail me. This is Business Focus with the award-winning Park Wichiasari. Let me tell you what's happening in the Ghanaian banking industry. Uh, Lately, we've had a lot of reports about high non-performing loans ratio due to the present economic challenges. What remedies are there, or can you suggest, to deal with this high non-performing loans ratio? It's the same thing. You see, the government is competing with the banks for, for the money. I mean, the treasury bill rates, and so, so the cost of funds is high. And if you go to the banks to borrow money, it means they have to make a margin on the, on the, on the uh, Bank of Ghana prime rate. Now, if you have interest rate in the 40% zone, your costs are just too high, plus inflation running where it's running, and plus the dollar running uh, uh, again where it's running. It is so, so, so uh, difficult, and it's very easy to fail. So you go to the bank to take money. You have made some projections. This is what your duty will be. This is what your exchange rate will be. This is what you think inflation will be because it affects the cost of things. And if all these factors are not, uh, or do, not have, do not occur and they run helter-skelter and you can't, cannot be controlled, they will default. I'm even talking about the good ones who want to pay. They will default. And then you have the crooks plenty in the system. You can ask me. Who take money knowing that they don't want to pay? And you can't get them because then they can uh, use the legal system, which doesn't uh, bring justice on time. Therefore, as far as justice is concerned, for me, it's, it's justice is denied. And I had debt collection cases when I was in the bank that were eight years old. 
the, the exchange rate is also, <laughs> when I sat here the other time and told somebody, somebody that the exchange rate, which we expect 18 to possibly 20 by the end of the year, he said, oh, Kofi, why? You still stand by that? We're almost there. We're now almost at 17, and we are in September. And Christmas is coming, and the election is coming. So 20 is an easy, easy forecast for me to make. And under those circumstances, why would the NPOs go up? Tell me. It's just a few months to the general elections. You've heard from the opposition. They say they want to reset the economy. You've heard from the government. They say they want to upgrade. Uh, where do you stand? <laughs> I think to reset or to upgrade? I, I think if you can trust them with the track record that they have, that they can upgrade, then it's up to you. If on the, on the other hand, those who say they want to reset, was it reset that you Yeah, see, let's be real. By my assessment, and also by what I know and my experience, I think I will want to try someone who has experienced the position before. Because people ask me that in hindsight, what would you have done? And I have ready answers for it. But if you are now, uh, uh, what do you call it, upgrade? Upgrade something which... Well, that's an endorsement for John Mahama. You're saying that John Mahama has been president before, and so you can trust that with the benefit of experience and hope, hindsight, hope, he'll yes. do a better job. Yes, I think so. You have no regrets? No, 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 no. And in any case, with what I've been through with MPP, I can't be sitting here and singing the tune and what we're discussing. So I don't know about that. And you, mean, you will trust to give your money like to your John Mahama yes, 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 yes. than to Dr. Baumia, who's been vice president, yes. who says he's never been president because, before. Because, listen, um, I don't want to dwell too much on it. As in, uh, I don't normally get myself inside uh, into policy. But if MPP can do something better now, vice president can influence it. And nothing is happening. So I think he's being done in by his own party because he's not causing any of the changes. And somebody says, he said that uh, he's waiting till when he comes to power. Right. So Ghanesh He's going to take away the betting Ghanesh tax. Ghanesh will suffer until you come to I don't, I don't think that sits well with me. Because if I have something to do, you do it and we say, ah, look, they are now doing things and therefore we can have hope. Lately, I've seen people like uh, Dr. Papakwisi Indum. He's had audience with the former president uh, talking about a possible return of his banking license. Of course, the NDC through John Mahama have also said that when they come into power, they will ensure that some of these licenses are returned to the owners. Um, are you happy about this? Um, it's good for the years. I mean, I think it has to be done legally. Um, it's not that he comes and he says, uh, because I like you, I'll give you back your bank. I think they have to actually see if the case is presented against the various banks hold water. For those that don't hold water, what is the position in the, in, in, the, in the judiciary? And if there's nothing wrong against you or no wrongdoing is found against you, then you can seek uh, some kind of redress from the government. You'd be happy to have UT back? Not personally. Um, the point is I'm 72. Uh, I don't have anything that I want to prove to people. But if UT has to come back and the government feels it's the right thing to do and it's done legally, maybe we'll find some people to run the new UT. I, don't, I will not certainly, I was tired. I resigned from UT 20 months before it was collapsed. So I'm not going to rush back and say I'm, I'm back, no. But I think it's good for the government to look at each of them individually. Really? That's what we've done. We did it by regulation. When we started increasing minimum capital up to 400 million, it means that foreigners had to bring in those monies and to take those shares up. So you Through find, their parent companies. Exactly. So the, the foreign companies could raise those monies. The local companies could not raise it. And therefore, some, for some of the banks, you have to go to the foreigners, foreign investors. And when they have majority interest, there's no more Ghanaian bank. It's a Ghanaian it's bank in name. You know? So why? Should we leave the banking sector for foreigners to run? Really? Because so, they say they obey the rules, 
they are more diligent. That's what I'm saying is the fault of the regulator. Because mm. you should have, you can have special rules for Ghanaian banks. And the government must take special actions to ensure that businesses go to the Ghanaian banks for them to grow and become better. Deliberate. Yes. I mean, like, the government can say these contracts, the financing must come from local banks. It must be deliberate. You must love yourself. If the former president invited you over, if he won power, and asked you to serve in his government, would you take up that job? I don't think he will invite me. I don't think any politician will invite me. He's your friend? Yeah, but he knows me too. So I would be surprised if he should call me and give an appointment. It means that he means well and he wants to do different because he knows me. If we should change our politics, as in the democracy that we have, we have to tweak our democracy. One by one vote will never take us there. Universal adult suffrage? Will never take us there. Because it's... it's what's what's going to take us there? It's only theoretical, I, 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 I will admit. Mm. But one by one vote, maybe about 90% or the people don't even understand the issue. They are just waiting for T-shirts and TVs and things to vote. And that's why the new patriotic party, led by Nana Dankwa Kufuado, implemented the free senior high school to ensure that we have a lot more people going to school. And, 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 and that policy appears to have caught on well with a lot of Ghanaians. It sounds good for the years, but ask parents. They are paying more than when there was no SHS. Are they? Yes. Now you have to send them food, you have to do all sort of things. Even water, some schools, you have to send your kids water. Are you satisfied with how this government has tackled the issue of corruption? No, not at all. That's quite, come on, you are not serious about that question. I'm very serious. <laughs> Opa, I think, I think we're too familiar with each other, so when you ask all this... I'm very serious. I'm very, very serious, sir. I think the government is in corruption. And the letter the president wrote to the party that he hoped that he would be absolved. I mean, we made a judgment. So what are the courts going to do? And you see, they know themselves as seeing the president and his people. And you must see that this guy's uh, 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 level of spending and the whole demeanor of the person and the asset he's controlling is way, way, way beyond his means and impossible. Won't you ask me a question? and say, ah, and I'm saying I ate too much. The president must see it. So actually, they are encouraging corruption, because you see people who had nothing, have never ever worked before. All of a sudden, they have all the cars, and all the properties, and people say they have bank accounts, and they are traveling all over the place. They don't have a job to their name. What's that? So you think they are fighting corruption? No, no, no. And is that why you want a change in the current administration only because you believe John Mahama can deal with the corruption of this government? You give it a better shot. You don't trust Dr. Bahamia dealing with his own people? I don't know about the MPP, but so far I haven't seen them do a good job at all. That's all. The people pan have said that one of Mahama's difficulties over the years is that he's such a nice guy. He's too much But of a he's nice got guy. some experience now. And he knows that being that nice may not pay off. And if he says he wants to try it again, I, my vote is the only one, but I will put it on him. Uh, Mr. Morbin, you know, some would say listening to you, you, you probably sound very peeved, no, no, very, no, no, no. very bitter with the NPP, and that's why and you want to see their back. Because I wasn't born yesterday, right? I'm 72 years old. I saw independence. I was alive and kicking. Five year old, I can remember certain things that happened at independence, the structure that we had, the value that people had, the institutions that we had that were working, that were left with us, uh, left for us by the uh, uh, imperialists or colonial masters and things like that. And I've seen all these institutions run down. It's unbelievable. Captain, you're suggesting to me that the black man who was given the chance in 1957 to manage his own affairs, to become politically independent, has not been able to manage his affairs. We haven't. Have we? 
have we improved the lives of people? You've been, uh, you know, speaking to a lot of young entrepreneurs, trying to mentor them. What do you tell them after telling me all these negatives and uninspiring stories about Africa and Ghana? What do you tell them? Well, I tell them that you are in this world to solve problems, to make the world a better place. And it's easier, if anything at all, to make a bad situation better than making a good situation better. Now, one thing I tell them is that really, really, the reason why we in this world is because God put us here to impact the world and to make it a better place, each one of us. Now, so instead of just running away when the situation is bad, think of it that situations are being created for you to solve. Lately, I've been speaking to a number of businesses who complain about the, what they call increasing taxes you know, that are imposed on them. Even you know, importers, lots of taxes they claim uh, been imposed on them. What do you make of the general tax system? Uh, I think they should widen the net, but then they are afraid to widen it because it will affect their cronies. So we find that the few people that are paying tax, they have to be taxed more all the time. And these are the genuine people in the system. You can't tax them like that. Even workers, the tax is too much for them because the pay itself is not enough. So they should look elsewhere and be more uh, ingenious about it and be more innovative about it. And it's not rocket science. It's not new. It's done in other countries, but we cannot practice it. Thanks very much, Captain. Nice, Pa. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Pleasure is all mine. I'm talking to uh, Captain Prince Kofi Mwabin, the founder of uh, UT Bank and uh, uh, later UT Holdings. Uh, he's been my guest on Business Focus tonight. Uh, that's all for Business Focus. Thanks for watching. There's more uh, of this program on Facebook. Uh, also, you can watch it on our DSTV channel uh, 279. Bye bye.